If you want a single snapshot of how European militaries are rewiring themselves for the drone age, you could do worse than Sweden's latest procurement decision. On January 9, 2026, Saab announced a new order from Sweden's Defense Material Administration, FMV, worth roughly $160 million for track fire remote weapon stations, with deliveries planned from 2026 to 2028. On paper, that sounds like routine modernization. In reality, it is a very deliberate answer to a question that every NATO planner on the northern flank is now forced to ask. When cheap drones can find you, track you and kill you, what does organic self-defense actually look like for small boats, dispersed bases and maneuver units that cannot rely on a full air defense umbrella every minute of the day? FMV's own wording fills in the why now that press releases often skip. Sweden is replacing capabilities that were donated to Ukraine while also expanding self-protection across several platform types and accelerating counter uas fielding. That combination matters. Replacing donated systems is the immediate logistical driver, but the more important story is that Stockholm is treating the drone threat not as a niche air defense problem, but as a day-to-day -day survivability problem for almost everything that moves or sits still within range of an adversary's sensors and loitering munitions. So the procurement is not just more turrets. It is a quiet shift in how Sweden intends to fight, especially in exactly the places where Sweden expects to be tested first. Coastal approaches, archipelagos, and the scattered nodes that keep a modern force alive. The headline feature is the new Trackfire Ares configuration built around a 30 by 113 mmm 230 LF Bushmaster chain gun and paired with proximity-fused ammunition to deliver an organic hard-kill counter-drone capability. That phrase, organic, is doing a lot of work. It means the unit does not have to wait for a specialized Shorad battery, does not have to borrow coverage from a higher echelon, and does not have to treat every drone contact as someone else's problem. Instead, the same platforms that already patrol Sweden's littorals or secure its bases can carry a self-contained sensor and effector package designed to detect, track, and engage small, fast, awkward targets. And that immediately raises the uncomfortable question, why a 30mm gun for drones? Why not more missiles? Because the drone threat is not a single threat, it is a spectrum and economics is now part of tactics. Quadcopters, small ISR drones, first-person view strike drones, and loitering munitions force defenders into a cost exchange dilemma. If your answer to every contact is a high-end missile, you can win the first few engagements and still lose the campaign when your magazines run dry. A chain gun firing proximity fused rounds is not glamorous, but it is brutally practical. It offers a defensible cost per engagement while still delivering lethality at the ranges where small drones become truly dangerous. The M230LF is chosen for that problem set. It is not about sheer caliber. It is about hit probability, effective ammunition, and a rate of fire that can exploit short engagement windows. In published material, the weapon's firing rate is around 200 rounds per minute, and counter UAS engagement ranges are described out to roughly 2,000 meters. That is a very specific envelope, far enough to engage many small UAS before they reach grenade drop distance or complete the targeting handoff that enables a strike, but close enough that your fire control and ammunition can realistically deliver effects. Compare that to the typical 7.62 mm solution. A rifle caliber remote weapon station can be useful, but it is often operating at the edge of physics against small drones, especially when the host platform is moving, the target is jittering, and the engagement geometry is messy. So Sweden is stepping above that baseline without jumping straight into the missile only tier, but the gun is only half the story and arguably not the hardest half. The real challenge in counter drone combat is not firing rounds, it is getting accurate, stable, repeatable fire solutions against targets that refuse to cooperate. This is where Trackfire's design philosophy becomes the point. The system is stabilized and network capable, built around what Saab calls a stabilized independent line of sight, where the sensor module is decoupled from the weapon axis and recoil effects. That sounds technical. But the implication is simple. The operator can keep the sight on target while the platform slams through waves or bounces across terrain, lays through the engagement and feed a fire control solution that includes 3D target prediction. In other words, the weapon station is meant to do the math that human reflexes cannot do reliably, especially when the target is small and the window is measured in seconds. Sweden's geography makes those seconds even more precious. The Baltic littoral is not a clean, open battlefield. It is cluttered coastlines, islands, narrow channels, and a constant mix of potential targets that can appear and disappear behind terrain. In that environment, sensor performance and sloop performance become tactical performance. Trackfire Ares is described with a cooled medium wave thermal imager, a day camera with zoom coverage, and an eye safe laser rangefinder operating at 1.55 microns with high pulse repetition. 
Saab's own figures describe target range performance beyond 6 kilometers for a NATO standard 2.3-by-2.3-meter target and measurement accuracy on the order of meters. That matters because if you can range quickly and accurately, you can shorten the time between detection and effect. And in counter UAS work, time is the currency you never have enough of. Then there is the mechanical reality. You cannot engage what you cannot physically keep up with. The director unit can rotate through 360 degrees and elevate roughly from minus 20 to plus 55 degrees with maximum slew rates quoted around 120 degrees per second and high acceleration for fast transitions. Think about what that means in practical terms. A small drone pops above a tree line. A fast craft breaks cover between islands. A fleeting shoreline target appears for a moment and disappears again. The station has to get on target now, not after a slow traverse. And because this is Sweden, it has to do it on small craft where weight and top weight matter. Saab lists the director unit around 280 kilograms, excluding weapon and ammunition, which is a reminder that every capability comes with integration costs, especially on boats where center of gravity directly affects speed and sea keeping. So what will these actually sit on? FMV's language points to a very concrete answer. Replacing weapon stations in amphibious battalions and the Navy's patrol boat company that were donated to Ukraine and adding stations for new production combat boats for the amphibious battalions. Saab's history makes the platform link even clearer because Trackfire has been associated with Sweden's Combat Boat 90 family used by amphibious forces designed to move fast and fight in the littorals. That is not a conceptual leap. It is an evolutionary upgrade. Sweden is taking an existing fit and pushing it into a higher-end self-protection and counter-UAS role. And importantly, this is not just maritime. Saab's January 2026 statement ties the procurement to the Swedish army as well, and Saab imagery has shown track fire mounted on the Swedish Armed Forces TGB-15 vehicle. That should ring alarm bells for anyone still thinking in old categories where air defense belongs to air defense units and everyone else just hopes for coverage. The drone threat has collapsed the separation between frontline and rear area. Airfields, logistics nodes, and dispersed basing sites now face persistent surveillance and opportunistic attack. If those sites cannot defend themselves, the entire force becomes brittle. This is where Sweden's operational learning curve becomes visible. Saab has described the Swedish Air Force's Loki counter drone concept as a modular solution combining Giraffe 1X radar, track fire weapon stations, and electronic warfare components. And it has reportedly been deployed in a NATO context, such as at Malborg Air Base in Poland in 2025 to protect allied facilities including logistics hubs supporting aid to Ukraine. That matters because it suggests the procurement is not driven by abstract threat briefings alone. It is being shaped by real deployments, real constraints, and the uncomfortable discovery that counter UAS is not a single gadget you bolt on, but a layered system where sensors, jamming, and hard kill effectors have to be integrated into a coherent workflow then zoom out one more level and the strategic logic comes into focus. Sweden joined NATO on March 7, 2024, and that changes the stakes. Stockholm now has to defend its own coastline and critical infrastructure from day one and also be interoperable as part of an alliance posture that assumes high threat operations in the Baltic and the high north. FMV's Amphibious Battalion 2030 modernization effort reflects that reality by centering on coastal operations and sea mobile platforms that integrate command, sensors, and effects across peace, crisis, and war. A remote weapon station that can be operated from under armor or below deck, distribute imagery and targeting data inside the platform, and integrate into broader battle management is not just a gun mount. It is a survivability node in a kill chain. So what is Sweden really buying here? It is buying time and resilience. It is restoring donated inventory, yes, but it is also standardizing an integrated sensor and effector station across multiple platform types and adding a 30mm counter drone punch that can travel with maneuver units instead of being tied to fixed sites. In the Baltic, where a target can shift from a fast inshore craft to a low drone in seconds, the ability to slew quickly, stay stabilized, compute a 3D firing solution and engage from protected positions is not a luxury. It is a prerequisite for staying in the fight. And that leads to the closing question that should matter well beyond Sweden. If drones have turned every gap in coverage into a vulnerability, how many of your units are still waiting for someone else to solve the problem? Sweden's trackfire Ares order is one answer. Not perfect, not magical, but grounded in the reality that modern forces must carry layered defense with them, especially when operating in cluttered littorals and dispersed bases under constant surveillance. For NATO's northern flank, that is not just procurement news, it is a blueprint for how to stay alive long enough for reinforcement, escalation control and mass to matter.